this video we're gonna inlet this lock into the stock um, this is a French tool lock uh, it's really nice nice and big sparks really well holds a large plant has a nice long mainspring in it um, the first thing I've done to the stock is I've cut my profile out all along the stock I've smoothed this area out a little bit here um, with a rasp and file just so we can get good pencil lines on it we don't want to be drawn where it's been uh, the saw cut um, I've laid a I've laid out where my pan needs to be um, this right here is the center vertically of where our flash hole is going to be. I'm installing a vent liner on this. This is what the customer wants. So uh, I've measured the barrel inside to find where the breech plug is. And I've measured up half the distance of my vent liner. That'll be where the flash hole is. And I've drawn a line out onto the stock here. This line here, let me zoom this in a little bit here. This line here is the center of the barrel. That's where our pan will be. Our pan will actually be a little bit below that. You do not want your pan above that line. Um, when when the powder ignites in this pan here on the, the lock, it, uh, it, the fire of the powder going off doesn't ignite the powder in the barrel it's the uh, actual flash from the powder in the in the pan here so if we install that just a little bit lower we don't want our powder in the pan to be covering the flash hole or the vent liner we want it just a little bit below uh, so it'll have good ignition um, up here I've drawn a line where the bottom of the barrel channel is and where the uh, ramrod hole is. This is the top side of the ramrod hole here. It's basically our web of wood in between the barrel and the ramrod hole. That'll show us where our front lock bolt needs to be here. I'm using a 1032 screw on this. Um, that's a fairly large screw. Um, uh, the reason I do, drew these lines up here is so that I can locate where the front of the lock needs to be. Um, so that, that way my bolt will fall in the center of this here and not up to the top or not down below. I can adjust the lock position to where I want it in relation to this web of wood here. So I have this point. And this point to work with on laying out the lock so the first thing I'm going to do to this lock is take it all apart and uh, get it down to just the plate and uh, and we'll start laying it out and letting it I wanted to show you all how to remove this tumbler and the hammer properly from the lock here um, a lot of people think you know stick a screwdriver back in there and pry it out you don't want to do that that's uh, gonna be hard on <laughs> really hard on your tumbler up in here and uh, it'll scratch the crap out of your lock plate and that's just not the right way to do it um what you need to do is take a small punch like this that'll bottom out not hitting on the threads up in here it'll bottom it up bottom it out in the tumbler and then just take your small hammer like this and it's out and that's the right way to do it all right we've got our lock all taken apart here uh, we need to lay out this bolster area onto the stock and we need to uh, position our lock plate where 
want it on here. This is a final say so right here of where it's going to go. So I look at three points when I'm laying these out. The pan area, the front bolster, and the tail end of this lock plate. Um, and I try to, it's not going to, if it's not perfect, you kind of have to uh, equal out. You know, if, if the tail end is low, um, raise it up, it's going to bring the front down. So you kind of need to equal them two out. But the, the main thing is the pan right up here in relation to the flash hole. So I'm going to lay it on there about where I want it and position that pan in relation to my marks for the flash hole where I want it. And now I hold my finger right there. I'm looking up here at where my uh, web of wood is. I want to raise that a little bit. And I'm not, top of my pan isn't above my line. It's right on my line, which is fine. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to trace around the pan fence right here on the back side. Down the bolster. Kind of, you can get back behind the bolster there a little bit. Difficult to hold. I'm going to trace around the front of the bolster a little bit. You can't get to the back side of the bolster, but I'm going to show you a trick that I use. I, uh, I take a sharpie marker here, and I mark all along the bottom of my bolster right here. Right on that corner. Line it back up with my pencil marks. Right where I want it. And then roll the plate down and push down really hard. Maybe even give it a little tap. And then, I don't know if you can see, let me zoom it in, there's a real slight line where the bottom of our bolster is now. And I can follow that line with my pencil and draw the pan right in there, or the bolster right in there. It didn't it didn't mark back here but I can kind of trace that line about how it needs to be and there you have it Just gonna make sure I'm good. I draw this line up right to the back of the breech area. So we're going to inlet this down so that the lock plate sits flat on top of here and then we're going to trace around the profile of the plate.
So I've got the bolster and let down maybe three sixteenths of an inch or so. Um, we'll put our lock plate in there and uh, it lines up good. Uh, good and lined up with our webbing lines up here. The front is and uh, it's laying flat on the stock. Um, We'll go ahead and trace around this dude and start inletting it down into it until the bolster touches the barrel. Back here where the bolster is, we don't want any gap whatsoever in between the bolster and the barrel. If there is a gap um, while, you're, while the gun's completed when you're priming the pan, um, if there is a gap, it can uh, the powder can get back through that little crack and uh, between the barrel and the lock and eventually over the years pack up in the lock mortise and uh, ignite and actually blow the lock off the side of the gun and we don't want that at all so absolutely no gap in between the bolster of the lock and the barrel none whatsoever so we'll trace around this and start getting it down into the stock some up against the side of the barrel and then we'll do some uh, checking and measuring and making sure that it's in there square and uh, where we want it and then we'll start inletting the uh, lock internals I've got the bolster area cut down almost till I'm down to the barrel here. Um, we're gonna try to see if our lock plate will fit in. It falls right in there really well. There's a little bit of a gap right here, that's okay. Um, we don't want this lock plate to be snug in the inlet because um, we want the user to be able to pull this out fairly easily to get in there and clean it and take the lock apart and grease it you know and um, so what I'm gonna do next is uh we got to we've got to take the lock plate down farther to the barrel I've got about uh, maybe 316 or not three, uh, 330 seconds to go um, we're gonna mark the whole back side of the lock plate with a sharpie marker so it will start printing on here so I can see where uh, I need to remove wood. Once we get it down close we'll check to make sure it's square with the top of the barrel here. Um, so yeah we'll just mark this up and start removing wood till we get down close to the barrel.
I've got the lock plate inlet a little bit farther down. Um, it's starting to print on the bolster down here, and I've cut this wood back down to the burial really close, so I know that we're getting really close to uh, our initial inlet depth. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this wood down to expose the barrel. Um, maybe another 130 seconds, something like that. Um, the, the entire time that I'm inletting this, I'm paying attention to uh, keeping it square and so that it doesn't rock or there's no high points or anything. That way when we put our bolts in, it uh, can't tilt on us or anything like that. So a lot of the internals will, will remove, uh, we have to remove a lot of wood inside here, you know, back where the tumbler is and the sear and the mainspring. So I'm paying close attention to the outer profile of this, not so much on the inside here. Um, the bottom of the bolster area, we want it to hit there, but mainly around the entire outside edge of this is where the lock plate will sit. So we want it to print really well there when we're all the way finished in lighting this. So I'm going to remove this wood here and uh, probably I need to remark my plate. It's got quite a few spots that uh, don't have any ink on it. And I'll put that back in there, tap it down in, make sure it doesn't rock anywhere, and uh, I'll remove my high spots until we get down to the edge of the barrel here. Okay, I've got the lock plate all in light. It's down to the barrel. It falls right down in there. Doesn't rock at all, anyways. And uh, there's no gap in between the barrel and the bolster. It's a good idea to take a little flashlight and look back in there and make sure there's no gap at all. And there isn't on this. Um, Next thing to do is uh, make sure that it's 90 degrees to the top of the barrel here. Um, that way um, your hammer won't look all cocked or whatever. Um, what I do is I use a little machinist scale here and I lay it right on the lock plate up here. And I'll sight down looking this ways. Um, to make sure it's 90 degrees if it's a you can use a little machinist square too, precision square um, that works really well also but I just eyeball it and uh, usually it looks pretty good and this one's about perfect yeah so that's where I want it it's about 90 degrees um, Next video, uh, I'll show you how to inlet the lock internals, the tumbler, the sear, sear spring, the bridle, and the main spring. Thanks for watching.